Okay, so what's so great about this DHSS model compared to, for instance, the limits to growth model? <laughs> well, what we've done, we've changed the production function to from Leontief to Cobb Douglas, but that's not actually the most crucial difference. Okay, the really crucial thing is that we've said, look, this resource stock is owned by profit maximizing people, agents, and they are not just going to give it away. Even if it's free to extract, there is a scarcity, scarcity rent associated with the resource. And as that, as the resource runs out, that rent is going to go up. In fact, it'll go up at the rate of interest. And that will, instead of hurtling towards a cliff, that will give the economy a soft landing. Okay, essentially, GDP will gradually decline. Okay, we're not going to hurtle over a cliff. GDP will gradually decline. Resource extraction will gradually decline. Okay, but there's a bunch of problems with this when we look at reality, right? Because in reality, resource extraction is going up. It's not declining. According to this, it should decline gradually from the start. But actually, we know it's going up. And GDP is not declining. GDP is going up as well. So what is the problem? The problem is, well, one of the problems is this assumption. It makes no sense to drop technological progress. We need to put it in there. Okay, so if we want a model that can explain what's going on and help us predict the future. Of course, yeah. Um, that is a key problem with this model. Another thing you might have noticed if you look at the papers, the papers don't say that GDP has to go down. They say, oh, we might be able to keep it constant we might even possibly be able to make it rise. And the reason they can do that is that they set delta equal to zero. <laughs> okay. So they say, oh, we can just build up human made capital, stuff, machines and things, and they will never decay. They will never rust, they will never decay. And then everything changes. Actually, the analysis gets a lot more complex. I'm not gonna go through it, but then you might at least, you'll never have growth in the long run, but you might at least be able to maintain constant production, constant production, despite the necessary decline in resource use. But that still doesn't tell us why resource use is actually going up. <laughs> Furthermore, one of the sort of key sort of unbreakable predictions of the model is this that resource prices should go up steeply right at the interest rate which is typically like the last 10 years have been exceptional but prior to that like five percent or something you'd think five percent a year in fact that's not at all what we'll see what we see as we see in reality so there's loads of problems with this model, right? It really doesn't tell us much about the real world. Just a little aside, there's a thing called the Hartwick rule that some of you might have heard of, which says if, well, the, the sort of wrong version of it, if you don't understand it, it's, you can easily get the, the impression that it tells you that if we invest the resource rents in capital, so if, the flow of money to the owners of these resources, that's pure resource rent. If that flow of money is all invested in capital, then we'll get sustainability. That is completely wrong, and that's not what Hartwig said either. The truth is, if through such investment we can maintain constant capital stocks, then we can sustain utility. But 
there's loads of circumstances when we just cannot maintain constant capital. One of those is when there's any depreciation of human capital or human made capital whatsoever. Okay, so that's really just if you're curious and have read about the Hartwig rule or learned about it before. It's completely irrelevant when you have positive depreciation. Okay, so really this sort of baseline version of the model, especially the one they put in the papers with delta equal to zero, it's a distraction because it's putting all the focus onto capital accumulation, whereas what we should be focusing on is knowledge accumulation. That is the key to sustainability. It's the trade-off between declining stocks of non-renewable resources and increasing stocks not of physical capital but of knowledge okay that is the trade-off that is going to determine whether future people can have higher incomes than us okay but we're not going to talk so much about knowledge as such for a, another <laughs> for quite a while but what we are going to do is just stick in exogenous positive exogenous knowledge growth into the model and see what happens and we're going to look at three variants of the model and that will be the next three videos okay